Okay. All right, so uh, welcome back uh, to the uh, time series uh, forecasting series. Uh, we're already in chapter 11 of the textbook, The Forecasting Principle and, and, and Practices by Rob Hyman. And we started discussing the hierarchical uh, and grouped uh, time series. And one of the things that we have to realize is that in big, uh, usually in big organizations, uh, we have this kind of structure, right? If you are familiar with, uh, you know, with, uh, with, with a retail company uh, called Walmart, for example, uh, they did a famous competition. Uh, it's called the M5 competition. And it was based on this type of uh, uh, structural uh, structure time series. So what it, what it is about is that you have uh, an aggregate level at the top, right? You know, the, the first level, then your time series keeps uh, segregating by different levels. In the case of Walmart, it was by stores, by uh, item category, and by the item itself. Okay, you know, remember it's a, it's a retail uh, company, and they had around uh, 100,000 uh, time series organized in, in this way. Uh, we're not going to be, you know, uh, the example is going to be that much, that many time series, but the theory is is the same. So here. Uh, the example that the author gave us is the uh, the tourism in Australia within, you know, a, a range uh, of, of years divided in quarters. And the structure of this data is that each of the of the trips that is counted as overnight trips by you know by, by the domestic population in Australia is subdivided by states and regions regions and then there's another one category which is purpose but we have we are going to see that sometimes they use purpose for uh for the you know segregating the data and we're going to concentrate on the state and regions okay just to make the sample simpler so uh first of all uh we have we have seen this uh, data set before in previous chapters so this data set consists, let me give you a quick look, right? Uh, this uh, uh, data set is, is uh, subdivided in quarters, right? You know, the, the period is, is a quarter, four quarters per year. Then we have the state that uh, Australia has eight states and territories, okay? But territory is going to be the same as states. So they have eight and each territory is subdivided by certain regions within each, uh, each state. Then we have the purpose for the trip, and then we have the trip itself, you know, which is the value that we want to, uh, what we want to forecast. So that's the structure of this, uh, you know, of, the, of, the, of this data set. So the first thing that the, that the textbook does is that, you know, they uh, try to do the abbreviations of the test, right? For example, New South Wales is going to be named NSW and so forth, uh, so that we have an abbreviation for the state, just like in the US, for example, uh, you know, Florida is FL and Alabama is uh, AL, something like that. Okay, and then we're going to create what is called a hier hierarchical time series, an HTS object, which is the aggregation using the aggregate key and we're going to use state and region. So for example, it's going to aggregate the data by state and by region, but it's going to internally, it's going to maintain that structure. So it's very convenient in the, you know, in the Fable package that we're using, it's very convenient because that aggregate key uh, uh, preserves that hierarchical structure. In other words, it doesn't, it doesn't go away. It's just that it's easier to you know to visualize the series by these aggregations. All right. So we have the quarter, we have the state, we have the region, we're not using the purpose. And then we have the total trips by state and by region uh, for each quarter. All right. 
And if we plot that by the states, right? By the states, we're going to see uh, different patterns uh, for each of the states. Uh, for example, you can see that the north, north uh, uh, western uh, state, NSW, let me see if I'm correct, like right? northern, uh, the northern, not New South Wales, sorry, New South Wales, uh, it starts a little bit, you know, jagged, you know, maybe some seasonality, and it goes down and it goes way up, okay? Uh, here in the Western Australia uh, state, then it kind of, be, it goes a little bit stable, they goes down and it goes way, you know, there's a big spike here, okay? So you have different uh, patterns that you can, that you can uh, appreciate uh, visualizing the type of data in the aggregate. And then you have at this corner, the left uh, top corner, you have the aggregation of for the whole uh, eight, eight states. So you, you are at the top level in the aggregate, okay? So when we look at some of the states, for example, remember that in this data set, the purpose, uh, one of the purpose is holiday, right? Uh, holiday, there's business, they're just visiting, and there's others. So there's a strong seasonality in terms of which region the state is located. So for example, in Queensland, all right, which is, let me give you a detail on where Queensland is, right, in this map, uh, Queensland is this green uh, region, right, which is at the you know north uh, southeast part of Australia, which is the warmer uh, part of Australia, then we can compare it with Victoria, right? Victoria, which is Victoria, is at the southern eastern uh, part of Australia, which is kind of a colder a region. All right. So we see that usually the pattern of travel goes up, okay, when uh, there's a season change. So depending on the season, you're going to see an upward trend, depending on the region, or a downward trend. Remember that Australia is in the Southern Hemisphere. So the seasons are reversed from the Northern Hemisphere. So for example, uh, December, January, February, we have uh, summer in Australia. In June, July, August, we have uh, winter, all right? So you can see certain patterns follow those seasons, okay? In Victoria, you have, because it's the colder region, you have less travel during the, you know, the, the, the winter season, okay? In the summer season, you have a little bit more. Then in Queensland, the pattern is reversed. So you have all this, you know, you know uh, contradictory, you know, pattern, that you have to take uh, uh, account when you're doing this kind of uh, approach to time series, okay? All right, so I think this was the last, uh, the last uh, aspect that we discussed uh, you know, from, the, from the previous uh, uh, session, uh, the last two weeks. And there's another category of hierarchical time series, which is called group time series, all right? So in group time series, I uh, sh uh, showed the example of, for example, a big retail company, you know, uh, international company that has uh, presence in different markets. Let's say Europe, Latin America, and uh, India, for example, all right? So those markets are very uh, different. So sometimes you want to group all your data from Europe and not mingle with Latin America and not commingle with India. Unless, and I said this, unless there is some variables that cross, you know, is cross-sectional between those three markets. And then you have to take into account that. But the group data usually are hier hier hierarchies that usually they don't have anything in common. And we, you can, you, 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 uh, we can think about the markets in, you know, internationally, the different markets, all right? For this, we're going to study then, for this group time series, we're going to study what is called the prison population in Australia. And in the prison population, what we have is, uh, we have the date, 
okay? Uh, which is the, you know, the period, I believe is, 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 is in, uh, I believe it's in years. Then we have the state again, uh, Australian state. We have the gender, if the, you know, inmate is female or male. We have the legal status, which is remanded or sentenced, right? If he's sentenced, that means that there's a conviction. Remanded is that he's waiting for a sentence, but it's in, you know, it's, it's in jail. And then we have uh, uh, the indigenous. Indigenous is not, you know, uh, uh, taken into account in this in, in this kind of examples, all right? And if you plot this, you will see the aggregate value, right, of the whole uh, prison population across all states, etc. And you see that is kind of monotonic, right? It just goes up, <laughs> which is kind of uh, uh, interesting, okay? Uh, uh, to observe, especially between 2005 and 2016. In other words, there's there's more people being in prison in Australia. You know, you can. That, that's why you can you can uh, figure out, right? <laughs> All right. Uh, so I took. You know, I, I was thinking this morning that I will stick with the tourism, okay? Because there's a chapter, chapter uh, 11.6 which is the prison one, okay? So let's stick to the tourism. Let's put into the, you know, in, into to the burner, uh, the, the prison population, and then, you know, we'll come back to it because it's, uh, you know, they treat it a little bit different than the tourism, which is more traditional, all right? So we, we'll, we'll come back, we'll come back. So what are the approaches to, uh, Reconciling, right? Reconciling this uh, this hierarchical time series. Well, the first one, which is the more, you know, uh, let's say the more accurate uh, method, is called the bottoms up approach. All right. So the bottom up, what you're going to do is that you are going to forecast each of the time series at the lower level, right? And then you are going to aggregate all those, you know, to the, the levels that you know, you are interested. So for example, in the tourism, you're going to uh, get the time series from the state and from the region. And then you're going to go up to the state, to the region, to the state, and then at the national level, all right? Uh, an advantage of this approach is that there's no information loss. In other words, you are gathering all the information available because you are, you are doing it from the bottom, from the bottom level. Now, uh, one of the disadvantages is that, you know, it, it, it takes more time, right? Because depending on how many time series you have, it will take uh, more time. And if you have different models, you know, in this example, we are only studying one model only, which is the ETS, okay? The error trend smoothing, remember from chapter, I guess it's chapter seven, chapter eight, somewhere, uh, which is a simple model. But you know that simple models doesn't mean that it's going to be the best model. So take into account that this bottoms approach, even though it gives you the most accurate, is also the most time and resource consuming. All right. So let's do an, an example of the bottoms approach. So we have that tourism, right? Uh, data set, and we're going to be aggregating by the states. Okay, so our level now is going to be the states. And we already saw more or less, you know, how the how the pattern uh, looks for each of the time series. So we're going to use that time series states, and then we're going to model using the ETS for the value that we're interested to forecast, which is the trips, the value. Then we're going to do some forecasts at the national level. This is the, this is at the state level. We are going to do forecasts at the national level, and you just summarize of the sum of the values for those forecasts, right? Okay, the sum of the values and the mean value. And then we're going to plot it. And this is more or less, you know, what would, what would uh, look like the forecast at the national level, all right? Then if you want a more general approach, okay, that will work for all the forecasting uh, chapters, uh, methods, uh, we can, you can use what is called the reconcile, reconciliation. And uh, what it does is that, you know, from the bottom up, it reconciles, you know, to the top. 
So here we are adding the reconcile here, right? The reconcile, bottom up, uh, ETS, and then doing the forecast. And this is the, you know, the 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 result of this. You are forecasting each of those levels, right? And then you are getting an aggregate, you know, at, at the at, at, at the top, which is the the you know the addition of all this, of all this uh, uh, forecast. All right. All right, so that's one method to do it, right? The buttons of approach, and we did it within the, at the states level. You can keep going at the region level and using purpose, you know, as an indicator uh, for, for it, all right? Now, what about the top-down approach? Well, the top-down is the kind of the reverse of the bottoms up, right? You start at the top, right? You do the forecast, the good thing about this one is that it's very simple. Okay, you just have one time series, the aggregation of all the you know of all the trips. So what you're going to do is you're going to forecast that one, and then when you want to go down, you're going to do it kind of a proportional way. Okay, so depending on how much proportion the states or the region are within the whole pie of the aggregation, that's that's that one is going to be your forecast. That's why the top-down approach, even though it's a simpler one, uh, it will lack some information that it's that is uh, found at the bottom uh, at the bottom level. It's going to lack that information, and it's going to you know be less accurate. All right, but it's something that is you know is is, is doable, especially if you have you know a complex uh, type of uh, hierarchical uh, time series. All right, so. Advantages to the top-down approach. Simplest approach uh, has some reliable forecast at the higher levels, right? At the, you know, the higher is to that aggregation, to that top aggregation, the you know the, the most reliable. If it has too many levels, then the down levels are going to be less reliable, all right? And only a single forecast is, is required. In contrast with the bottom approach, we requires all the forecast for the time series uh, for the time series at the bottom, okay? And of course, it's less accurate. And there's a good article here that I included. It's called Introduction to Hierarchical Time Series Forecasting Part One, which explains you know, a lot about this, this type of approaches. There's also a mid, uh, out, middle out approach, okay? Which combines the bottom up and the top down approaches, okay? Uh, this one, the book doesn't, doesn't give us a, a, an example. Right, uh, just for the bottom, bottoms up, which is the one that apparently the authors, you know, are the uh, prefer uh, uh, that that approach. Okay. Any questions so far? Yeah. Okay. Uh, can I have the the link in the chat for this introduction to a hierarchical? Um, and then, uh, what is um, when we filter? Okay, mm -hmm. and we filter as um, uh, a bit up, uh, a little bit, uh, yeah. Here right. we, we filter out what is aggregated, but what right. is aggregated function uh, does? Because we we already aggregated k uh, with this function, so. Uh, mm -hmm. And so they are aggregated. So what do we filter with this uh, is aggregated function? Okay, what you are, you know, I, I'm not very familiar with that function internally, but I can see what is what is doing, you know, visually. Okay, and usually what it does is that it takes the state as a label, as a factor. Okay. okay as a factor so if it takes it out that means that then you can segregate it uh, aggregate it by the state okay mm -hmm. it's a little bit you know kind of contradictory but i i see i see how it works okay mm -hmm. uh for example if you want to aggregate it by region uh you have to then put you know not is aggregated by region and then it will get the region as a factor all right you know so you get that label the label and you see it more uh you see it more clearly in the prison in the prison population 
that they are different different levels, uh, they use that is aggregated to turn off or turn on, you know, those the, those levels. Okay. So, for example, if you are using the state as a label, that means that you can aggregate all that is within the state. You can aggregate it to the top level. Okay. That, that and, and this is what that, that that what they're doing is aggregated, but to the state level. All right. Yeah, yeah, I suppose that was something I, <laughs> yeah, I meant, but uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of, it's kind of tricky, it's kind of a yeah. tricky thing, okay, yeah. <laughs> but why but see, here we see, filter uh, out? Excuse me, yeah. Why here we do, we filter out, so we don't want them aggregated by state? Uh, yeah, but you, okay, you want the state to be the label. Okay, the label that follows the aggregation. So that's why you have to turn it off. Okay, turn it off, kind of convert it to a factor, and then you can aggregate like that. If you leave the aggregated, then it's not going to aggregate like that. Okay, so it's kind of, that's why I say it's kind of contradictory. Okay, and you'll see it clearly more in the prison, uh, uh, you know, uh, yeah. uh, example. Okay, take it for now, take it by faith <laughs> for now. <laughs> yeah, and because we don't have this uh, your notes unless you pushed it already in your uh, GitHub. No, no, not yet. I, I was still working uh, this morning uh, yeah, with okay. with with, uh, with this. But I just have the the link of the the things that you just mentioned. Uh, this one. Yeah. Okay. Let me see. Okay, let me go here. All right. Thank you. Okay. All right. So let's keep going. All right. So in chapter 11.3, let me see. I mean, I just, you know, did kind of a summary here uh but you have the information here yeah okay this is the chapter that i told you you know before that you need some kind of uh, knowledge on basic matrix algebra because they uh, the authors explain by algebra matrix algebra operations they explain how to do the reconciliation okay in in you know for our uh for our sake Okay, I just summarized it and said, okay, in summary, unlike other existing approaches that we have been studying, uh, the optimal reconciliation forecasts are generated using all the information available within a hierarchy or a group structure, all right? So it's important that particular aggregation levels or groupings may reveal features of the data that are of interest to the user are important to the model. Those, these features may be completely hidden or not easily identifiable at other levels, okay? So you have to really, uh, you know, to, to make this work, you have to really understand your data set, you know, how, how, is, how is structured and that level, the level of detail that you have, because depending on, what are you trying to forecast? For example, in tourism, if you want to forecast at the region level, for example, you have to then consider all those time series at the region level, right? And then try to reconcile it, but still you have, you, you, you have to do that, that, uh, that, that approach. If you do the top approach, you're going to lose some information because there's going to be some information hidden in each of those time series. For example, in the plot that I show you of the states, only eight, only at the at the you know at the second level, basically national state, you see all kinds of patterns uh, within a state. So imagine the patterns that you're going to see for seventy six uh, regions. All right. So depending on your goal, what are you forecasting first? Are you forecasting at the at the national level, at the state level, or the region level? That's very important. Okay, because then depending on the answer, 
then you're going to know which kind of detailed level you want to, you know, you want to study. Okay. And of course, you have to consider a package, a, a package, a library that understands that hierarchy and internally maintains that structure to, to use those, you know, functions like aggregate, the is aggregate, et cetera, to turn on or turn off all, you know, all, the, all those levels. Okay. I think it, that's, I, mean, I believe that's the most important, you know, part of this, apart from the, you know, for, for the matrix, uh, uh, you know, uh, operations. Just one thing that I'm going to mention is that they use in the, in the examples that they give us, they use two optimal, what is called optimal reconciliation approaches, okay? Which is the mean T and the mean T, what it does is that it minimizes the total forecast variance of the set of coherent forecasts. So in other words, it has a bottom sub approach. So you're going to have all these forecasts for the time series, right? With their, you know, with, with their variations. And then eventually aggregating to the top, you're going to try to minimize, you know, that top, that top level. Okay. The other one is the OLS, which we are familiar with as because OLS is ordinary linear regression, right? And we're going to try to minimize is the sum of the squares of the errors. All right. Okay. So in a nutshell, that's what it is. But this is this one, you have to take it really, you know, slowly and you know, refresh a little bit about the that's matrix uh, uh, algebra approach. Okay. All right. And there's also an article by the authors. Okay. I'm going to uh let me see if I have it here. Yeah, yeah, I have it here. Uh there, there, there's another article, it's not by the author, sorry. Uh, there's another article about optimal forecast reconciliation for hierarchical time series, okay? Which also can be, uh, and they quote, <laughs> that's what I said the authors, because they quote uh, Heine, Heine, all right? So they are in the same, in the same track, okay? All right. So let's try to do some forecasting, right? Okay, so here in 11.4, what we're going to do is uh, do the forecasting, right? For the final two years, for the final two years, eight quarters, that those are the periods, eight, eight quarters, two years uh, as the test set. And we're going to use the bottom up, the OLS, and the mean T methods for reconciliation, okay? Okay, so we start with the tourism full, right? And we aggregate by the state region and uh, do an interaction with purpose. So purpose here is used as a factor, as a category, all right? So the aggregation is by state and by region. And you're going to sum uh, the trips by those, you know, by those, uh, by those levels. Then you're going to fit the tourism with the TETS, right? And you're going to take only the, the periods that are uh, equal or less than 2015, the year 2015, because 2016 and 17, they're going to be your test data. And you're going to do the reconciliation, buttons up, okay, which we discussed before, you're going to do the OLS, ordinary linear regression, and then the mean T, right? Then we're going to fit it, we're going to forecast for two years, and this is the result, okay? This is going to give you the result and you can see it. So for example, you can see that the Northern Territories, uh, the forecasts are very, are very good, right? You know, they stay with the, with the, with the ups and downs, you know, that we're see, seeing in that, in that uh, period. But here, okay, ACT, uh, here uh, the forecast didn't pick up the signals. Okay, so there's something here that uh, apparently is not working. Maybe we need some other, you know, input or maybe changes, change, change the method, maybe use ARIMA, whatever, okay? 
but you have different different forecasts for the different states, right? And then you have also the aggregate uh, too. Now, let's say that we want, okay, we want the to see which is the forecast, but instead of the states, right? Okay, of the states, we're going to get the forecast for the purpose. All right, for the purpose, these are four. Uh, holiday, business, uh, visiting, and other. So here, and that is why it's kind of, you know, counter counterfactual, you filter with the aggregation of the state, but then you don't filter by the purpose because purpose you need it for the label, <laughs> all right? So because you need it for the label, you have to turn off the level, all right? And then when you do that, it gives you the forecast by the purpose, <laughs> all right? You have to turn it off to get it, you know, treat it as a label, not as part of the time series, just as a label. And then do the aggregation by that, you know, by, by that uh, function. It's kind of con con counter contradictory, right? But that's how it works, <laughs> you know, it's that, that, that's how it works because visually we're seeing that, all right? So for this, we see that in holiday, you all have all the forecasts, the reconciliation, they're following. Maybe they are a little bit underestimating in some cases, right? They're underestimating the, the actual observed values, but they're following it. Again, in other, which is the bucket uh, category, okay? Anything that is not business, holiday, or, or visiting, uh, we get some problems here. Okay, uh, the, the, this spike, uh, the models are not capturing, all right? So probably we need or other indicators or another model, you know, to, to, to uh, improve uh, this because this is going to affect the whole, you know, the whole, uh, uh, you know, uh, accuracy, uh, accuracy uh, met, met, all right? Then uh, in the following code then, we're going to then uh, do the metrics, okay? Because right now we're just visualizing, you know, what, how the forecast and how they interact with these observed values. Now we're going to do the metrics and we're going to do it for, you know, the whole thing, for the state and for the purpose, all right? In other words, you are not uh, turning off any one of them. And here are the metrics for RMSE and MACE, okay? Uh, Mains is the mean average, uh, you know, uh, square, okay? So one of the things that the authors uh, warn us, okay, especially about the RMSE, remember the RMSE, one of the weakness of that metric is that if there are outliers in your data, it will distort that metric because RMSE is based on distance. Distance between the mean forecasted and then you know the, the, the observed value. So it's uh, prone, right, uh, to be distorted by, um, by outliers. Uh, the maze is more robust in, 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 in that case. So you see all the metrics, right, for the RMSE, for the base model, the bottoms up, the mean T reconciliation, and the OLS, all right? And if you look at the, at the maze, right? And you're trying to reduce, minimize that metric, you see that the base right now is the one that, you know, has the lower uh, metric or the better, you know, forecast for this level, okay? Uh, reconciling the base forecast using OLS results in more accurate forecast compared to the bottoms of approach, okay? So you have the base, but still the bottom of approach is the worst, okay? The MT and the OLS are much better, but still uh, the base is still is still the, the best one. So maybe we have to tinker a little bit uh, the model that we have to try to you know improve it in that sense. Comments, questions. No, 
okay? Yeah, uh, I know that uh, at first, you know, that is aggregated, it's a little bit, you know, hard to understand, okay? But you have to take it as, as an opposite, okay? If I want purpose, I have to, you know, turn it off and then use it uh, as a label. If I want it in the aggregation, then, you know, I, I, I leave it on, all right? Okay. Uh, let's see. Okay, let me waste that time. Uh, let me put this here. That is good. Okay. So in chapter 11.5, okay, that's another <laughs> kind of, uh, you know, short chapter, but here, what the authors are trying to, you know, communicate, right, is that, uh, how, how can I how can I put it? They say that so far we have discussed reconciliation of point point forecast, right? So we have we have a mean, right? And then we have the the confidence, you know, confidence in terms, right? That gives you the range where that mean can fluctuate within the forecast. Uh, however, however, they say that we're all we're usually you're usually interested in the forecast distribution. And this goes to what is called probabilistic uh, forecasting, okay? So instead of the point forecast, now we're considered, considering a distribution, you know, for, for that forecast so that we can compute the prediction but intervals. So there are two fundamental results that are implemented in the reconcile function, okay? These are arguments that you can use in the reconciled function. So for example, if the base forecasts are normally distributed, okay, you can, you can do the, you know, the test, right? You can do the quick plot and all that to check if those base forecasts follow a Gaussian or normal distribution. Then you will have this, you know, this, this uh, you know, this, this function that tells you that y hat, right? Y hat is going to have a normal distribution of mu hat and the sum of the uh, of, of, of the forecast, okay? Of the of, of the h of the horizon, okay? If the base forecasts are normally distributed, then the reconciled forecast should also be normal distributed, and this is also the the nomenclature for that for that equation. All right, now. If the distribution of that forecast, if you that forecast, you can assume that it's not normal. In other words, you know, it deviates uh, from, from normality. In other words, it's skewed or whatever. Then we can use what is called bootstrapping because bootstrapping, we know that when we bootstrap, we basically generate means, mean samples that are going to follow a normal distribution, correct? Okay, that's the central limit theory. So to generate that bootstrap prediction interval this way, we only have to set up that argument or reconcile, set it up to bootstrap, bootstrap true. The, the comment that I have here is that if they give us an example, it would have been easier <laughs> to follow. But uh, there's an exercise that invites you to try it, <laughs> to try it in the, you know, uh, with this argument. In the reconcile function, try the bootstrap. Okay, but only, only if you have evidence that those base forecasts are not normally distributed. And we can, we can assume that they, 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 they are. You know, you have to do a, the hypothesis test. Okay. okay. All right. So let's go then to the uh, prison population. Okay, so now we go back. Let's go back. All right, so in the prison population, this is an example of the group uh, time series, all right? And this is the data set, and we're going to consider only three levels, the state, the gender, and the legal uh, status, okay? So we did the plot for the aggregation of all the, you know, of all the levels. You will see that's monotonic, you know, it just go up, goes up, there's no seasonality, you know, et cetera. By the way, is this stationary or non-stationary? 
Non-stationary, right? <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> Remember that <laughs> for your arima. <laughs> All right. So let's plot. Let's do different plots to see how is the time series regarding gender, you know, aggregating by gender, then aggregating by legal status, and then aggregating by the state. Okay, and these are the, you know, this is the code, and these are the, the, three, uh, the three plots. So by gender, we see that there are more males than female, of course. Okay, female is at the bottom, that little, you know, orange line. But you see that the female population is not increasing as steep, right? As steep as the male population. The male population is growing woo, really, really fast, really fast within the period that we are studying. The same for the legal, remanded and, and, and non uh, uh, remanded and, and sentenced. Okay. And then for each of the states, we see that there's one that probably has the most population, right? And that is the, the, the NSW, okay? The, the, the one with the goldie, goldie one, and then keep up. So we can see that some of them, the time series is very stable, right? So it could be kind of stationary there, okay, for your arima. But this one's here, uh -uh. they go, you know, they go way up. All right. So if we plot, let's plot the time series by prison population by state and gender, okay? So as you can see uh, here, what we're doing is uh, turning off those filters, right? And then we mutate the gender as a, as a character, okay? And that will give us that combination between state and gender. Then for the prison population by legal, by state and legal status, a, 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 again, we turn off those aggregations and then we choose the legal as the count for the legal. Okay. So now we have three, uh, basically three, three plots. Okay. One is going to be the prison population by state and gender. And you see the labels, right? State, the label state. And then you see the segregation between male population and female population. And as you can see, it's pretty uniform within each of the states that the males are going really up and the females are staying kind of, you know, a level, okay? Or, or, or a slight increase. Then for the state and legal status, we can see, except for ACT, okay? We can see that also that same pattern. You know, males are going, uh, shooting up, except Tasmania, right? Tasmania is kind of, you know, the trend is, is kind of, a, you know, non-trendy. Non, non it doesn't increase, the same as the female. But the other ones, it increases. And also the, the, the remanded are also increasing. And then pressing population by legal status and gender. So we see that the males, they still have that upward trend. And the females, they have, you know, a slight, you know, just a slight increase or even kind of flat thing, all right? So more or less, we have an idea. Depending on each of the aggregations, what are the time series uh, look like? Okay. And this is another one from the bottom level, okay, of the legal status and genders by state. All right. Okay. Now, let's go back. Let's go forward. Sorry. Let's go forward to the population because now we did your, our, our EDA. Now we're going to do some forecasting using the same methods that we did with the tourism. Okay, we're going to use the ETS model as our forecast uh, algorithm. And then we're going to do the bottom up and the mean T. Okay, so uh, we get the PRISM uh, GT, GTS, which already, you know, we got it from an aggregation back. Let me give you that. So it's not magic. <laughs> Okay, the prison GTS is this one. Okay, prison TS, okay, which is the derogation by year quarter, uh, getting those keys, right? Gender, legal status, and indigenous, and then putting the aggregation by gender, legal, and state. In other words, we're going to do the interaction of gender, legal, and state. Okay, and get the sum of the counts, the aggregation of, of, of the counts, right? Of the, of the po po uh, population. 
prison population. All right. So we're going to use that one, GTS, to fit it. We're going to fit it, and we're going to use as a training everything that is from 2014 uh, uh, before, before 2014, you know, including it. And then 2015 and 16, we're going to use as a test data set. Same procedure as the tourist. So we get the model base, we get the reconciliation, right? We fit our model. We do the forecasting for the eight periods, which is the eight quarters to do. And then we do the forecast by state, gender, and leave. Okay, we're going to do the, those three aggregations. And we're going to get the top, the top forecast. Okay, because we are doing all the aggregations. When you get one off, that means that that's going to be a label and it's going to be in that, you know, in that aggregation. Okay. So here, what do you see in this forecast? Give me, give me your insights. <laughs> I, I see that the trend, uh, the, the growing trend stays, mm -hmm. uh, maintains, um, but the level is uh, predicted is, is lower. Correct, or, it's or, interesting. Yeah. It's underestimated. Right at the top level, at the top yeah. level. Uh -huh. Okay, yeah. Uh, you see, I mean, it's still in the confidence intervals, especially of the mean t, right? Of the mean t and also the base models, right? Because the base models they don't they, they don't reconcile. Those are the base model. But with the reconciliation of bottoms up and mean t, the bottoms up really, you know, it doesn't catch that. It doesn't catch that, you know, that upward trend. But the mean T and the base, especially the mean T, it catches up, okay? Because even if the mean is underestimating, it's still within the confidence interval, okay, of that forecast, all right? Okay, so uh, the figure above shows that the three set of forecasts for the aggregate Australian population we do the base, we do the bottom soft forecast for the ETS model, and then we do the mean T, which is an optimal reconciliation approach from all those base forecasts of the aggregation structure, okay? In this case, the base forecast at the top level is adjusted upward, all right? Now, let's see that same method, but instead of the whole thing at the top level, we're going to do it by the state, okay? So here, what we do is that we don't aggregate by the states, so it can be used as a label, but we aggregate by the legal and the gender. So when you turn it off, that means that that's going to be then your, your level uh, of, of forecasting, okay? So now we do the same thing. We do the FC, we filter, we do the auto plot, blah, blah, blah. And then we got the prison population by state, and now we see the, individual forecasts, which e each of the reconciliations, the base and the MT, the reconciliation of the MT for each of the states. Okay, now, what do you see? <laughs> okay, the, the, the uh, NSW, so the most populated part of Australia is actually changing completely the... Um, yeah. That forecast is way down, way down. Okay, um, it's not helping with this one. Okay, so in other words, all the forecasts, even the confidence interval, they cannot catch, you know, that that spike, you know, increase in population. So def definitely, the model is not catching. Okay, so we need or to change the model or put some indicator there. Okay, that you know give us the indicator of why. That is going, you know, the way it go is going because this is a, a really big increase in a couple of years. All right, uh, and, and I, you know, I uh, I encourage you to, for example, you know, in uh, Federica, in Italy, for example, check if in in Italy it has been that, you know, that trend. But there's going to be a different trend. Uh, yeah, it might know, in, the, in the U.S. In the U.S., there has been an upward trend, but I don't think it's is that way. Okay, you know, that, that's my impression. Okay, this is really, uh, uh, this is really, uh, uh, I don't, I don't know, I don't know. 
all right yeah it might happen if they they, they like uh you know that when when they catch a, a gang or something like that and so they they right. put uh they 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 like sentence and uh, okay that number, number people yeah that number it's, is in the thousands it's unusual. Okay. okay that number is the is in the thousands so for example 11 is 11,000 12,000 so that's that's a big increase okay especially for that part of the you know of, of a region of a state region and the other ones they're doing you know pretty good there's still there's some order estimation here sat there's overestimation here in uh victoria okay you know the model didn't you know went down and then went up again but the model didn't catch it okay so the model kept going up <laughs> all right but now you can see at the state level you can see where you have to improve okay maybe i can use this for certain states this model but others i have to you know i have to reevaluate what, what i'm doing all right now let's uh you know do the the metric right you know how 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 are our models are are, are doing and here it's interesting that the authors introduce a new metric all right and it's a metric that is uh you know correct uh, it corresponds to that distributional forecast that we were talking about okay uh this metric is called the the crsp conditional rank proportional score okay crs CR, crps sorry skill score and it's it's a it's a it's like the acc uh corrected okay which is a one that uh includes other factors not just you know the the distance between the between the observed and the and the predicted so here what is interesting is that we're using maze which is not that uh, prone to distortions uh with outliers and we're you using that rank uh C crps okay the maze is a minimize in other words the lower the better in the case of the crps the higher the better all right so here we see that the MT, MT is the one that it has the lowest metric, not just for maze, but also for that conditional uh, ranking probability score. Okay, so uh, here is very obvious that mean T, you know, is is the one that is winning the the reconciliation, you know, uh, battle here. Okay, and as you can see, you know, there are other plots that you can do uh for your forecast by legal status by gender you know just you know turn on and off you know those uh those is is aggregated okay and you have the whole here you have the whole story because uh i just you know i just put just one which is at the top at the top of the of the of the of the if, uh, if, you, can, if you can go back to the uh yeah. to book uh you scroll up a bit sure yeah about here what is it sentences uh you mean here uh, this, this or maybe a little bit here. up again um a little bit more okay here yeah yeah so okay. prison population by legal status, reminded yep. and sentenced. So here uh, we have an increase in uh, sentenced, uh, so, you know, people uh, as a yeah, re Reminded are people that are waiting for the sentence, but they're in prison. <laughs> uh -huh. they're, they're not out, they're, they're in prison, okay? So, yeah yeah apparently that explains you know that spike that there has been an increase in people that are waiting to be sentenced right and they're still in prison compared to the ones that are you know that are convicted okay yeah convicted so they, they, but both of them are staying the only thing that you know we don't know this one the remand that we don't know you know how long they're going to stay because they don't they have been sentenced mm -hmm. okay you know according to what the that the data said, you know, the data dictionary, you know, tell us. But yeah, uh, very, 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 very good, very good observation. Uh, yeah, yes. based on this, uh, on this model, 
So it's for acid that the, the number of sentences uh, it's increasing, will increase. Yeah. yeah, but it's increasing. The sentence is increasing, but a little bit slower than the remainder. The remainder is the one that is really going way out. Yeah, yeah. Which, you know, I'll, I'll have to study, you know, the remand, I have to study each of the time series, the remanded, maybe territories and all that. And maybe that would explain why in the NSW, you know, we have that. Because if the proportional remanded is higher there, then, you know, we have a connection there. All right. Yeah, but very good point. <laughs> okay, so we are, we just have, I've left three minutes, so let's see what we have. I think we, we cover most of what we, we wanted. Uh, yeah, I think that's, that's it. Okay, so uh, the exercises, um, if we are, you know, if we are uh, bold, right? If we're bold, I think we should tackle this one, uh, the first one, okay, which is from the, 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 the National Prescription Registry uh, Bureau, Prescription Bureau Service in Australia. Uh, we have seen that, this one. Uh, what it says is that, you know, it has an aggregation structure, the ATC1, CT2, by concession, uh, by type, and then it gives you, you know, some of the exercises that we can do. And interestingly, he's telling us to use three methods now, instead of only the ATS, because the sample for the ATS, Check the RIMA and also check the S name. Okay. So let's let's try to do this. Okay, but first make sure that you understand my, my, my recommendation before you know doing anything is trying to understand the hierarchy. You know, how are they you know connected? And then try to you know follow the examples and then create your structure and try to see, you know, if I turn this one off, you know. What, how, how the aggregation uh, uh, changes, okay? Thank you. All right. Yeah. We did it, we did it. Let me tell you, hierarchical, hierarchical time series is it's not easy. 